very good morning to all of you. Thank you for taking your time out to join in. Uh, I need to introduce myself first, right? Uh, I'm Bhubaneshwari Raman. Um, I've been in the K-12 domain for about 32 years. And I started out my career as a teacher and I have taught in schools like uh, JB Vacha, uh, which is a state board school, uh, Bombay Scottish. I've been there for more than a decade, which is an ICSE school. Uh, I've been with the Mount Litra Z schools. I have kind of uh, audited and supported almost about 80 schools across the country during the time I was there. Uh, I would do a lot of teacher training. I would do a lot of content development, auditing the schools. Uh, I've been uh, uh, right through, right from the KG to the grade 10 is what I have always handled. Uh, I did my B.A. at first and I was teaching the middle school and uh, I realized that children had a lot of problems and difficulty and a phobia for math. I'm a math science person. So I said, uh, why, why do children have this in the middle school, you know? And then I realized that the foundation years, uh, it's been a little weak and they needed a lot of concepts that had to be clarified. So I went on to do my ECC ed, and that is how my range spans from the KG to the grade 10. Um, I, I was fortunate to uh, have worked in schools like Bombay Scottish where we had the ship system. So I would teach the higher grades in the morning and I would teach the KG in the afternoons. Uh, I've also been with international schools with JBCN, et cetera. And uh, currently I'm a consultant and I have trained more than uh, 7,000 teachers plus across the country as well as the Middle East. And my, uh, uh, what, what, what gives me a great high is how do I help teachers and parents with small little tips and tricks and activities that you can do with your children to make the learning fun. I think once you enable the fun in the learning process, the children are going to take to it like fish to water. So how do you enable that fun is what I always focus on. And that's what I do in my parent workshops, which I've conducted more than 100 of them. I do that with the teacher training workshops and enable them to take it forward in the classes, whether it is for the teachers to take it forward in the classrooms or whether it is for the parents to take it forward in their homes with the children. So that is uh, to give you a brief about me. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm a very passionate educator and I love interacting with uh, children, uh, as I told you. And today I'm going to use this forum. Uh, we are addressing parents. And I would like to definitely address as many queries and questions that you have. Please put it forward in the chat box. And uh, definitely I would want to take it one at a time uh, at an appropriate time uh, when, when I finish the session that I have planned out for all of you. So with this, I would like to make a begin and uh, uh, please feel free to use the chat box. And uh, today we are going to talk about remote learning, which is the new normal. I think all of us are familiar that COVID-19 has, it's a pandemic that has forced all of us to be within our safe place, which is the home. And we have all the educational institutions which have been shut and rightly so, because we will have to control the virus, the spread of the virus and the safety of the children needs to be taken care of. Now, it's very important as parents, educators, we have to accept this first. This is going to be the new normal. We are not going to go back to the scenario how it was about three months before. It is going to take some time. And there are a lot of changes that are going to be happening during this particular new normal phase. Preschoolers, if we, we, we are talking about children from the age group of say two to seven, they need a nurturing and a caring environment which has been provided by the schools, by the preschools, by the teachers, and has been beautifully designed so that all the areas of development, whether it is the cognitive, whether it is the motor, whether it is the physical, whether it's the socio-emotional has been taken care of. But now with remote learning, where we have some of preschools which have taken to online learning are able to you know, give them those guidance maybe for an hour or hour and a half, and then it is for the parents to take it forward with their children. So given this new normal, 
it is important that we as parents have to create a beautiful environment, a challenging environment, a stimulating environment for our children. And that is very important because I'm going to give you a background to why the environment is very important and what are the things that we need to keep in mind? What are the ample opportunities and ample activities that need to be planned for the children is very important in this particular day. Uh, at any point of time, if you have a question, if you have a doubt, or if you have not understood something, feel free to put it in the chat box. And I do have the team also to kind of put it on to me in, uh, in terms of asking those questions that you have put forth. And uh, I will definitely address because this is a session which I wanted to be an interactive session, parents, because I want you to get the best benefit out of it. And so that you can take it forward in your homes with your children and write back to us saying that, okay, this worked, ma'am. This didn't work. Can you give me an alternate approach or an alternate idea? So I would definitely want to be associated with your parents for this. And I'm sure a uh, first try and me together would want to address these queries uh, so that you are able to take it forward in your homes. Because as I always tell teachers and parents, not all children are the same. What works with one batch of children in a particular year may not work for the next batch for a particular teacher. What works for one child, if you have two children, what works for one child, maybe your elder one, will definitely not work with the younger one. You may have to do a little bit of tweaking. So we shall look at all those options and we will want to help you out with that. So given that, yes, we have accepted the new normal, what is it that you're talking about environment? Environment is the third teacher, and I strongly believe in that. Like, for example, in the Reggio Emilia philosophy, you have what children learn does not follow as an automatic result from what is taught. Rather, it is a large part to the children's own doing with what? As a consequence of their activities, given our resources and our resources. So it is important that not what you teach is exactly what the children actually learn. It is a consequence of what they are able to do as activities with what? With a lot of resources that we provide. So we're going to talk about what the resources could be. Are these something which you have to procure from the shop? Or are these something which you have to make it yourself? Or are these something which are available and which we just need to pick and, you know, kind of put it together? So these are very important and very interesting parents. Please make notes when you want to, because these are something which are really uh, uh, things which will encourage your children in various domains of development. So let's start with that. So environment as the third teacher is something which is very close to my heart and I strongly believe in it. How can this be achieved? So now for understanding this, we need to understand a little bit about the stages of development of the children. So the children are born, you know, we're talking about say zero years onwards, okay? So Jean Piaget is a famous psychologist who basically did a lot of work in child psychology. So he divided it into four different domains. He said the first, which is from the birth to two years, is the sensory motor uh, stage that we're talking about. And at each stage, what are the things that are needed? And what are the things which are something that you can do as activities is what he had actually guided us on. And there's a beautiful, uh, wonderful thing for the preschoolers, which they basically come in the pre-operational stage, which is the next one, which is basically from two years to seven years. Then you have the concrete operational stage from seven to 11 years. And then you basically have the formal operational stage. So now today we are going to be focusing on the pre-operational stage that our children come under. So this is, uh, uh, what are the basic things? So he says that children take an active role in their learning process. What do they do? They observe and they learn about the world around them. That's a very important thing, observation. They observe, they're highly observant, and they look at various things which are available in terms of 
what do they learn from their environment? What do they learn? They observe, they learn. And every time there is something new which gets added on. So they take in that new knowledge and then try to make sure they're able to fit it with their previous knowledge that they have. That is why we should always, as teachers, I keep recommending to the teachers that look at the previous knowledge and try and associate it. Again, for parents too, please look at what they know prior and start taking it in, in terms of associating it with. Because the children will have to balance with what they already know and the new knowledge that is coming in. So Jean Piaget is very, very clear. He says that there is a lot of new knowledge that keeps coming in and they're going to build it on the existing ones. So the previous ideas that are held need to take, make a little changes to accommodate the new one. Now, this looks like a jargon to all of you. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose for children, you're giving them the wooden blocks to play, which are those cuboids, okay? The children are comfortable. They say, okay, these are blocks which are wooden and are cuboid, and I am going to build a structure. So they start building a building, a big tower, or a home, or something like that. Now, this is where we are in the equilibrium stage, where they are absolutely comfortable because they are, un they've understood this. Now, what you do is you introduce, you introduce a new block, a wooden block, which is arch-shaped. Now, the child is confused. It's a disequilibrium stage. The child says, okay, now these are something which is here. So, the child experiments with that particular toy or the block that you have given. And the child has the previous knowledge that the blocks are wooden and the blocks are cuboid. The tr child tries to assimilate and accommodate these blocks here. And then he involves them in the play, that is the adaptation phase. And then says, okay, blocks are wooden and they can either be cuboid or they can be arched. So this is where the child has understood and adapted the new knowledge of the arch-shaped blocks and then said that now he's at an equilibrium stage. Now you suddenly introduce some plastic blocks. Now the child is again at a disequilibrium stage. The child says, what is this? And then starts experimenting with it and then again has the assimilation and the, the, uh, the background to where is it and okay, accommodate this with respect to what I have as a knowledge prior to that. And then takes it as part of the play and involves it in his play. And then that is the adaptation. And then goes on to say, yes, blocks can be wooden or plastic, can be cuboid or arch shaped. So that is the understanding. So at every phase, if you see, children go from equilibrium to the, uh, the next phase, which is basically going to be you know, the disequilibrium, I would say, stage, and then go on to assimilate, accommodate, adapt, and then come back to that schema, which they frame in their mind. So this is what Jean Piaget very strongly referred to as. And given that scenario, so we have to keep this in mind when we are actually planning out the environment for our children, because we have to understand that children take time, they experience Explore. They need to experiment with things and then they need to connect with the knowledge that they already have and then say, okay, this is something which can be done along with this or this is also the same family. So they take their time. It is not about what we teach. It is not about blocks, can be wooden, can be plastic, can be this, can be that. No, that is not the way the children learn. The children learn through activities. They need a lot of hands-on experience and they love experimenting. And unfortunately, we do not provide that amount of time and resource. And when I say resource, you must all be wondering, okay, what is it ma'am is going to say, I need to go to the shop and buy it. During the lockdown phase, will I ever be able to go and buy it? Okay, maybe next month. Just wait, pause. We are going to come to the resources and you will be surprised at the resources that I'm going to be telling you. Great. So... Uh, we're talking about Jean Piaget. We've got a background about environment being the third teacher. We also understood the different stages that Jean Piaget is talking about. So here we are going to next say a few things that what children can do in this stage, which is the two to seven, which I told you is the pre-operational stage, which is where our preschoolers come in. They began 
the this is a phase where we begin to think symbolically we are able to use words and pictures to represent certain objects so this is a very important stage where their language development improves and they are able to associate a lot of these things a uh, very important this stage where they are very egocentric it is only i me myself they are egocentric and slowly in the next phase is when they go on to peer related uh, you know ideas stuff play etc this phase they are very very egocentric and they can't see it from another person's point of view you know they cannot look at it from another person's perspective at all um again when they start thinking and they are high with respect to the language their logical abilities are not so very well developed so we need to give them a little more time in terms of logical abilities which will come to the next which is the concrete operational skill so children become very skilled in this particular stage with pretend play i'm sure as parents all of you have noticed your child coming back from school and saying uh, let's play teacher teacher i'm the teacher and you're the student she may have you and a teddy bear and a cat and a dog and have a little bit of a blackboard there and you know to have a chalk and start i'm acting like a teacher or they would like to play doctor doctor so the pretend play is a very important thing in this particular stage and do give opportunities for the child to do it because the child will be highly creative language develops and a lot of vocabulary also develops during this particular phase so imagination creativity all these are aspects which we have to definitely help the child you know kind of gain it and that is possible only with these experiences and when you provide these environments and opportunities uh given all these things that we are looking at okay we we have said that of course yes one more uh, important aspect that john tiaji says about this particular stages you take say for example water in a fat bottle uh, you take a fat bottle and a slightly taller bottle you take one glass of water and pour it into that fat bottle and you take one glass of water and pour it into the tall bottle and you ask the children in front of the child you pour that one glass into this and you pour one glass into this and ask the child which has more water the child will say that the bottle which is taller has more water so they do not have the idea or the perception saying that it was just that one glass which was poured into this and it is just that one glass which was poured into this they do not they are not able to connect that similarly if you have a lump of clay and make it into two equal balls and have one of those balls pressed into a flat pancake kind of a thing and ask which which is more the child is immediately going to say the one which is a flat pancake which is slightly spread out is bigger one that that is the stage in which they are there and as parents please remember that these are pointers that your children will definitely not be able to identify saying that it's equal or this is you know i feel that this is more you'll have to learn to accept that because at this particular stage it will take a little time for them to understand this given all these beautiful things that we have done excellent we have understood the logic now let's jump into something which is very close to my heart as i told you is the resources and the first thing that i'm going to talk to you is about the theory of loose paths theory of loose paths was actually introduced by an architect it's simon mickelson it was way back in uh, it was way back in 1971 and he said that loose paths give you a lot of ideas in terms of creativity and imagination um so when we when we say loose paths what do we mean by loose paths so it's nothing but you are providing children so those of you who are parents will actually uh, you know identify with these kind of things something like uh, you go to the shop and you buy your child a beautiful gift say a car and uh, it's 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 really amazing and you spent a lot of time and you said okay this is a beautiful car you wind it the car goes in front and you do this the car actually has uh, you know tumbles and then you do this it there is it back tracks and you with a lot of joy you come and give that toy to your child the child opens the gift plays with the toy car and then after a few hours or maybe a few days the car is in one corner 
and the child hardly gets back to it. That could be one scenario. And parents, you could also see another scenario where you will bring a particular toy and the child opens it and instead of playing with the toy, plays with the box and plays with the manual, plays with the wrapping paper that you have given. So why does this happen? So many a times we notice that children are fond of a few other things which are there in your home, like your plates, your cups, your newspaper, etc. The reason being, when you buy a toy, a toy is something which you can only use it at one particular uh, frame of you know, utility. For example, it could just be a winding toy, it could be a pushback, it could be something which is, you know, a remote control toy, etc. But it is only in one particular area that you can actually play with it. There is nothing more you can go beyond. So the toy, yes, you wind it, the car moves forward. You push it back, okay, the car has this particular speed and then it moves forward in this particular direction. How long do you think children are going to be engaged in this? They need a lot of creativity. So instead of that, if you give them things like newspapers, you give them, so here is where I divide the loose parts into different segments, which are actually naturally available ones and which are actually manufactured ones. So the naturally available ones are things like stones, pebbles, rocks, sand, you have leaves, twigs, you have all these different things which is available in the nature. You could put them in different baskets and keep it ready for the children. The manufactured ones could be something like your bottle caps, something like tires, cardboard, cartons. Children love cartons. It could be something maybe a yarn or a string, could be a spindle. It could be, you know, your cello tapes. After you're finished using them, you have that entire uh, cardboard kind of a thing, which is the outline. You can use that. You can use the toilet paper rolls, tubes, which you throw it away, keep them separately, and you give this to the children. You will be amazed. You will see that children will play with these for hours and hours, for days and weeks to come, because there is no one way of using them. So loose parts are those which can actually be carried, moved, can be put together, can be disintegrated, and can be used in various forms. This is the definition of loose parts. So it is not something that what I have told you just now. It could be anything. It could be your beads which you have at home. It could be the pipe cleaners that you have. It could be the clips that you have. It could be the wooden pegs that you have. It could be multiple things there. So all that you need to do is there is no one way of using that particular loose part, but Given these different pieces, you will have, for example, if you have cartons which you have given your child, a child would say, oh, I'm going to make the tallest tower. And the child starts building the entire tower unit. Another child could say, oh, yes, this is beautiful. Let me open up the cartons and make it like a tunnel. So the child opens up the cartons and makes it like a tunnel. Another child says, I'm going to make a bridge over which the cars, the buses, and all the other vehicles can go. So the child makes that. Another child says, okay, I'm going to use these cartons and I'm going to make a slide. How in the park, the children have fun playing with the slides. I'm going to make a slide in that particular way. And similarly, you will have n number of ideas. What happens in this? You are promoting hands-on learning. Children are highly creative. They imagine a lot of things and they come together to put up a particular project or idea. And what do they do? It's divergent thinking. One child, what one child has actually put together will not be the same like what the other child has done. That's divergent thinking. Each one of us have got a beautiful creative mind and we need to put that to use. And that is possible only when you give them an environment, you've given them the resources, and it has to be a stress-free environment. They're not going to be judged. You're going to appreciate every aspect of the project that the child comes up with. So you will be amazed. So now you may ask, what else is there? I mean, apart from creativity and imagination, what else? 
language develops. The child is going to explain to you, you know what I'm building is like this, but unfortunately when I was building a tall tower, it just tumbled and fell down. So what I have to do is I'm going to make the down part stronger. So they understand that the foundation has to be stronger and then they will build up on that. So their language, their vocabulary develops. A lot of critical thinking, why did my tower fall down? What is it that I need to do to make it sturdy and you know upright? So a lot of critical thinking happens and they're able to solve them. So a lot of problem solving happens. So the theory of loose parts is an amazing approach, which I would urge each one of you as parents to do it. And all that you need, you don't need to go to the shop to buy all these things, all that you have at home. You may have a few pebbles at home. You may have some kind of uh, clips at home, pegs at home, newspapers readily available, magazines readily available. You may have some of those old tires which are punctured, which is there in your garage. You can pick that out. You can have a lot of these tubes which you have, maybe for the vacuum cleaner or maybe for the washing machine. Some of those tubes are broken. You wanted to throw all these. These are highly great resources for your children. Keep them separately. Of course, yes, take care to make sure that these resources that you collect do not have a sharp edge and do not have any problem. So you have to keep that in mind because, and of course, suppose you're giving items which are very small, the children shouldn't put it in their mouth, just keep their age in mind. So I, uh, children love to play with buttons. So I give a lot of those buttons of different shapes, et cetera, and the children me. In fact, if you give them buttons or bottle caps for that uh, matter, they will, uh, some of them will say, okay, yes, I join it and I'm going to make it in the form of a big pizza. So this is the pizza and here I have my mozzarella and then they would cut out a few yarn pieces and put it that way. And then they will have those small little round circles which they have cut it out from the cardboard and may say, that, okay, this is pepperoni or this is tomato and this is etc. you know, different kind of things. You can have another child who will say, take those bottle caps and say, okay, I'm going to make it in the form of a snake. Oh, this is a snake, but you know snakes, they do not harm if you do not go and trouble them. So there are a lot of things that they come out talking to you about it and they would also explore various opportunities, you know, to use this in other forms. So allow children to explore all the loose parts as I have defined it to you and help them. And, and there is no, do not instruct them. This is called free play. Like we had uh, somebody asking me, you know, some children, all he loves is free play. This is free play. And you ask your child to do this as a free play. And what are you gaining? You're actually allowing children to develop on their problem solving skills. You are helping children to develop on their critical thinking, on their creativity, on their imagination, divergent thinking, active learning, hands-on learning, a lot of language development. What more do you need? You have all these beautiful things which come under just the theory of loose parts. So parents, today make sure that you do that. And I would be very happy if you can write to First Cry and they will forward it to me. And I will be more than happy to help you out in case you have any problems or if your children have come up with beautiful, lovely projects, ideas, give them vessels. Give them, you know, with vessels, they will start making it into a musical, beautiful musical, uh, 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 a mixture of drums, a mixture of something which they blow into, etc. Give them, uh, uh, you know, with these musical instruments or rather these plates and tumblers and cups and things like that, they would actually arrange them from the smallest to the largest or make a robot. In fact, when I gave it to some child, the child said, I would want to make an elephant with this and use those beautiful uh, plates as ears and, uh, you know, something which basically like a trunk kind of, you know, it was a, a spoon which was there with a little bit of a fork which is nudged above and made it in the form of a trunk. I had another child who said that I want to make a robot. So the children will come up with various ideas. Allow them, allow them to play. There is no time for free play. Free play can be done at any point of time and never think that this free play is not a structured one. So what is my child learning? In fact, the child learns much more during this kind of a free play rather than when you have a structured syllabi or a structured curriculum or a structured you know, timeline where you have got, okay, from this is what I'm going to do. Allow children to learn while they are playing all these things. See, 
this is one beautiful one. Uh, very important to develop on the language is have a lot of read alouds. Spend time with your children to read aloud. Take age appropriate books and have the child beside you and have the book so that both of you are able to see it and read aloud for the child. And more importantly, children see what their parents do. So I would always advise parents that before you go to bed or you know you have a particular time, just pick up a book and you read. So when children see you reading, maybe something that you read as uh, it could be a novel, it could be a magazine, whatever it may be, the child also picks up his or her book and starts reading. So the love for reading or the love for books actually comes more from what we do at home as parents. So do encourage, do have, have a particular time for your read aloud so that the child looks forward to it. And also make sure that you read on your own so the child sees and then child also picks up his book to read. So the more they read, the more the vocabulary develops and their language development is there. Uh, this is where I would like to definitely go back, develop robust routines. So let it be that in the morning after the child gets up, okay, this is the time that you're going to go for a walk, maybe around the building or maybe in your lawn. So this is the time that we are going to spend together to do a few experiments. Maybe this is the time that we are going to do for read aloud. Maybe this is the time that you're just going to allow children to have the free play. So have a routine so that the child knows that, okay, this is exactly what I'm going to be following. And the child has a mind. See, when the child goes to school, the child has a routine. I get up in the morning, I brush, my mom gives me a breakfast and then drops me at school and then comes back. But now with the new normal, uh, we, we are talking about the current situation that we are going to go through for the next few months. So this remote learning, the children will start understanding a routine or following a routine only when we have that as a set pattern. So make sure that you have robust routines and you are the one who has to help and take it forward as a lead and showcase it to the child. Very important, even the academics, it is not that this is the time I'm going to sit with you for math. This is the time I'm going to sit with you for your language, no. Weave it in the regular routine. For example, you get up in the morning, okay, you're having your tea, the child is having a milk, and then you say, okay, yes, yeah, so today, what day is it? Let's have a look at the calendar. So while having a look at the calendar, the child automatically says that, yes, today is, I think, eight. I can see today is eight, and you can have a small counter that you place on the calendar where you move it to eight. And then you say, okay, today is eight, wonderful. So how many days have gone by in the month of June? So the child can say, you know, the child can actually say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven days have gone by in June. A lot of math is coming in, please understand this. And when you're talking about eight, okay, today is eight. Can you please put eight marbles in this vase to quote that today is the eight? So the child takes up marbles or beads, or it could be even your chole, your rajma that you have, or groundnuts. So you can pick up something which is around and give it to the child, and the child understands the quantification. As the child drops in the bead or the rajma or the marble, the child understands that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eight in the calendar, which is there, and then you can, of course, go on to say, what day is it? And the child can actually see the calendar and say, oh, yes, eight, today is a Tuesday. And then say, okay, yes, tomorrow, what day do you think will come? So after Tuesday comes in Wednesday, and that's how they are able to understand the days of the week too. You need not stop with this. You can even say, let's just go out. While we're going out for a walk, let's see what kind of a day is it today. Is it a sunny day? Is it a rainy day? Is it a cloudy day? So let's go and observe. So weave in a lot of your academics in your regular routine. It need not have to always be with a book. It need not always have to be with worksheets. It need not always have to be with uh, textbooks and certain manipulators. It can be something, by the way, while you are having your tea or your breakfast, you can have this time. Ask these kind of questions. Reading and writing is very important, but it doesn't always have to be with the notebook as I told you or the worksheets. How can you do it? For example, today you're going to bake a cake. I see that in lockdown case, a lot of moms and dads and 
uh, people around are baking lovely things. So maybe you're going to bake a cake with the child. So you can ask the child to say, let's create a recipe. Now you may say, ma'am, my child will not know the spelling of all these. Absolutely okay. Let the child draw it. Let the child write it in the way he or she knows sugar. Maybe it could just be say sugar. What is it beginning with? So it could be say S U maybe. And then they would slowly start developing the interest to understand what the spelling would be of that particular ingredient. It could also be a pictorial image that we are doing it. So when we are making this list, what are the lists that we need to find out? What is it that we need to shop if we have to make this cake? Oh yes, we need to go for milk. Oh yes, we need to buy certain eggs. Oh, we have to buy uh, sugar. We have to keep. So the child makes a small little list, a shopping list. So the reading and writing comes in there. And then a lot of math is involved too. What does it involve? It involves, oh, I need to take a full glass of milk. So a full, an empty, a half, tablespoon quantities like a two tablespoon, half a teaspoon, all these, even before you teach them fractions, they actually understand this while they are with you making or baking a cake or making another pizza or making some exotic dish with uh, you in the kitchen. They are learning a lot of math. So again, this becomes a fun element for the children. They feel that, okay, yes, math is all around us. Oh, learning happens in any environment. I don't need to just sit with the book. Mom is so uh, interesting. I, I would love to actually do something more with you in the kitchen. So then you can allow the child to make lemonade. So whenever we give examples, it always is the lemonade. So you can do various things with the children. Um, plenty of family time. Lockdown period, one great uh, plus point that we have noticed is basically uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know time that one has spent with the family. Uh, use this. Take up you know, the old photographs, the old albums, and then you see, okay, who is that? Okay, this is mom. Maybe they can write out a small shit and write it, or they can make a family tree and, you know, write it. Or while they're making the cake, for example, you can actually, while you're baking the cake with your child, you can take pictures at different, you know, points of time. When you're actually mixing it, when you're actually putting it into the tin, when you're putting it into the oven, before putting it in the oven, and, you know, after taking it out and then slicing it, make those different, take those different pictures and make a book. And then ask the child to write out a small subtitle, what was that particular stage. So reading, writing, math, incorporating a lot of these things in the family time is highly important. Uh, you have music and movement. That's again another very interesting thing which you can play with your children. So you could, you could do various things. Like for example, if you want to teach the children subtraction, you know, without even telling the word subtraction, you could say, okay, five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and broke his head. Mama called the doctor. Doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Now, how many do we have? Four. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. So you have a lot of these rhymes which are related to numbers, which are related to your alphabets, which are related to your body parts. You can, you can teach them various things. So have music and movement. The moment you do it with a lot of joy, the moment you do it with a lot of enthusiasm, that's definitely going to translate into the child. And the child will actually want to take it forward and involve this. Again, this need not have to be a session that, okay, yes, this is a music and moment session. Come, let's do it. It could be sometime when you're walking in the lawn and you're actually singing, you've actually seen a frog and say, hey, I know a beautiful rhyme about frog. Do you want to learn that? Oh, five little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating some delicious bugs, yum, yum, and then go on. So again, you're going to learn about the descending order, five, four, three, two, one. So children are good in counting forward. So when, when you ask them to count, they will say very fast, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. But the backward counting comes in a little difficult for the children. And you know, when you introduce it with these kinds of songs and then show it with certain actions, it's very important. Another thing is uh, the concrete pictorial abstract approach. I think today we may not have time because we have a lot of questions that have come in and I would like to take those questions up. For those of you who are interested, I have my YouTube channel where a lot of games and activities are there. 
you can click on to the youtube channel and you can do a lot of activities whether it is storytelling whether it is games and activities whether what i told you just now the cpa approach is the concrete pictorial and abstract approach you can actually do that how do you help children understand numbers numbers is not only about four this is numeral four this is the way i write it and draw four dots no introduction of numbers and quantification is very important for the children and a uh, various games and activities are there on the youtube channel you can search for it in youtube under the name of bhuvaneshwari raman and you have a lot of it and definitely subscribe to the channel because every week i keep adding on a lot of things so uh, with this i'm going to uh, end my session and start taking up the questions that have come up uh so i have a few of them here uh, pragati ma'am says um, ma'am my boy is four years the problem is the concentration he can't sit for five minutes to do some activity all he loves is some random free play now since schools are going online he gets diverted to watch screen youtube i don't know how to deal with this so uh, pragati ma'am i think with with right now what we have just said free play does not mean that there is no uh, learning happening for the children uh, we definitely have a lot of learning that happens for the children and do incorporate this the moment the child is so involved in the free play and is learning this way the child will never get diverted to screen time you will notice that children love hands on playing rather than see why do they watch screen time because it's all about when we are talking you, you you know you ask the children to study you may give them a worksheet you may say do this you may say do that come let's sit together what is 2 plus 1 so you are asking him or her questions but the moment you start doing it and weaving it as part of your daily routine in various activities that i have just now said your child will definitely not take to the screen time and you will be surprised i would love you to try this out um uh, another uh, parent has written uh, my son is a uh, real basketball boy man has written my son is 3.8 years old will be starting his lkg class from monday online the classes will be for one hour daily since it's the first time he will be attending online classes and he's quite restless can you help me with this to make the classes easier for him from my end sure ma'am so what you need to do is basically when you are having the set routine prior to even starting the classes of course yes you are saying monday monday is just two days away that is never too late start with a routine saying that you know from tomorrow onwards we are going to do this in the morning when you get up we will have this particular time that we are going to read a book together you and me together and then we will go out for a walk and then we will come back and we will see something very interesting for about half an hour so the child gets into a routine then the child knows that okay yes after doing these two activities i'll have to sit for half an hour in front of the uh, you know screen where i'm going to be learning something and be present there man so it's not like you know you leave your child in front of the screen and you move away make sure that you are also around because this will definitely and the uh, teachers who are taking online sessions are also aware we do know the attention span of children children cannot sit for one full hour so what we also do is we intersperse it with a lot of activities in between we have some music and movement after a concept is being taught so from the teachers and also they will make definitely their uh, uh, games activities and make the session more engaging so be rest assured it's a matter of actually a habit it's a matter of a routine setting which you can start doing it right from today so say after this we will have so just draw a small time table on his board and say that okay this is over why don't you put a tick mark to finish this so it's not like a set pattern that you have to do this but let the child do it willingly so that is to answer your question ma'am and here i have a uh, dimple uh, ma'am asking my nephew has online class but he doesn't get up early he is 3 years old what do we do he doesn't think it's actually school so he doesn't get up ma'am it's very uh, uh, true because we as adults are finding it difficult uh, to adjust to the lockdown phase it took us some time children in this stage as i told you in the pre operational stage cannot know in fact on a day when they don't go to school they think okay till then today is sunday so that's that's the frame of mind that they come with so he doesn't know that an online medium of instruction is also something which is a school so it will take time but the moment you set certain routines and the moment you explain to the child do not leave the child always you know it is always you there is a weaning off period so during the first few sessions you sit with the child and let it not sound like it is school just say it's an activity 
question. Let's understand what it's going to be. Oh, today we're going to draw something. Man is asking us to draw a giraffe. Oh my God, I don't know. Do you know it? Come on, let's try that. Make it interesting for him to look forward to. I thought the school would also give you a guiding, uh, you know, an, an outline saying that today we would be doing it with an alphabet or we will be doing the drawing, etc. So you can have enough time to look forward to, you know what? Today we really don't know what, what's going to happen. And I think something about the giraffe is going to come in. Let's see. Okay, are we ready? So create that enthusiasm. The moment you show the joy and enthusiasm, it automatically takes on or rubs on on your child. Another question is, uh, uh, Lily Jane Ma'am is asking, my daughter is starting her LKG from 18. She will have a two-hour class with an hour break. Please help me with tips to make them sit in a place. Uh, Lily Ma'am, this is exactly what I was telling. The moment we have a routine which is set up prior to this, the child will automatically get used to that routine. We will have to prepare the child. And as I always say, make the child look forward for it. Anything that the child looks forward and is full of enthusiasm and saying, oh my God, I'm going to have fun. The moment you say you're going to have fun, the child is definitely going to look forward to this. So um, the other one is uh, Kitty Goy. Uh, my baby is five months old. How can I develop her mind in such a pandemic time? What can I do with my baby at home? Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, I think the time that you spend with your children is very important immaterial of the age. So five month old baby is and that that's the reason why uh, as educators we have taken a call that even though the children are small we should have the remote learning because their development is very important and every day is important. So now I would recommend that whatever activities I have shared with you do play with the child in the age appropriate manner. Create, like if you see the five month old child will actually, you know, uh, she is in the sensory uh, motor stage. So she will actually hit on the mobile, uh, on the crib and say, when I hit, does it move? So the child wants to observe, the child wants to explore. Make sure you give enough opportunities for the child to use her sense organs, uh, eyes, ears, touch, feel, everything, so that the child explores and understands the world around. Uh, here we have another ma'am. Um, my question is, my niece is five years old. I just answered that, I think. Uh, I think a concentration, um, a Harshal uh, Pardeshi uh, has asked, how do you keep concentrated? My nephew lacks concentration. Concentration comes in when you have a certain focus. And the focus comes in when you have developed that kind of an interest. And that interest can be cultivated when you allow the child to say, do you want to see what kind of a puzzle this is going to turn into? Why don't we explore it? I think it's going to be an elephant. The, the child may say, no, 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 I think it's a Mickey Mouse. Okay, then you say, okay, let's try. And the child will be so focused and his concentration will develop that he will want to prove that to you that it is a Mickey Mouse and not what you have said. So I love the children. The moment the children look forward to, the moment the children feel there is a fun, the moment the children feel that there is something interesting, and the moment the child feels that, okay, you are seeing something different and I'm seeing something different and I want to prove it to you, the child will put in a lot much more of enthusiasm in that and the concentration develops. Uh, Disha is asking, uh, my niece loves to play outdoors, but getting her to sit down and study is difficult. And now that she can't go out and play, she spends all her time watching shows or movies on the iPad. How can we get? Exactly, Disha, ma'am, as I mentioned to you, you need not go outdoors. You can bake a cake with your niece in the kitchen. And while you're doing that, a lot of language develops, a lot of science develops. We are talking about science when you're actually putting the sugar into the milk and you're mixing it. Where does the sugar go? Where did it disappear? So then the child can actually understand a lot of science. Does it happen only with milk? Does it happen with cold milk or warm milk or hot milk? Can I try this with water? Does it happen with water? Oh, why is sugar dissolving? It's taking a longer time. Whereas when I put salt, it is faster. There is a lot of science. So, Dishaman, I would appreciate that you can take her into the regular routines and then say, okay, yes, there is a bit of a math in this, there is a bit of science in this, etc. 
uh, I hope that will help her understand and she need not go outdoors. And the moment she starts doing these things with you in the kitchen while preparing a sandwich for uh, breakfast, maybe, you know, you arrange, okay, I want, I want five of the red fillings. So what are the five of the red fillings? Oh, I have a red capsicum. I have a tomato. Oh, yes, I want to put a little bit of a cherry so that I have a sweet, uh, you know, kind of a taste in my mouth. So that's also red in color. I will put that. So these kind of things will get her so engaged that she will not want to sit in front of the TV. She will say, okay, what breakfast are we making for tomorrow? What color are we going to do? And then you can start talking about number, color, and various other concepts and even fractions like half, quarter, etc. Um... I have twin daughters. Soumya has asked, I have twin daughters, two and a half years old, who are super active. How to channelize their activities, how to control them and teach them to be quiet for some time? Please advise. Soumya, ma'am, uh, I, I would appreciate that there is no need for them to be quiet. In fact, the more they are active, it is better. I do understand, yes, sometimes, you know, you need some time, you need your me time, etc. But the moment you give them this free play, like what I told you with the loose parts, Give them a lot of newspapers, magazines, you know, and uh, uh, you can give them the tubes, rolls, you can give them marbles, you can give them stones, and just allow them to explore it. You will see that they will take about half an hour to build certain things and then come and call you and say, mom, come here, please come here, let me show you this. And you will be very surprised at what each one of your uh, twins have actually done. What one has done will be very different from the other. In fact, I would appreciate you can also give them fabric. Children love, as I told you, pretend play. So give them fabric. You will see that they will make tents. They will make a fort. Some of them will turn it into a cape and become a superwoman or a superman or, you know, a superhero. And they will talk to you a lot. You know, I'm a superhero. I go, I will go and save everybody. I will go and fight with the coronavirus and make that go out of the world. You never know. Children come up with various ideas. So allow them to explore. Give them these loose parts. Loose parts are nothing but different things which can be moved, which can be carried, which can be brought together, which can be taken apart, etc. It could be, as I told you, newspapers, cartons, stones, thread, yarn, spindle. Uh, uh, it could be some uh, uh, clips, pegs. Uh, anything that you find in the house which you think you may want to throw it out, just think why. It could become a resource for the loose parts. It could be tires, old tires. Children love to play with tires. With tires, they actually make structures. They make a seesaw. In fact, they make vehicles with those wheels also. They make, you know, where you can have the uh, flower pots fit in. And uh, you, you will come up with, you will see that they, they come up with various ideas. Uh, the next question here I have is... Uh, My daughter is starting for LP2. I think I just finished that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, please, uh, Sakshi is asking to buy some activities for a two year old that can help him in overall development. He's done with body parts, animals, fruits, and vegetables, shapes, and A to Z. Uh, like I told you, Sakshi, ma'am, incorporate a lot of activities like, you know, reading the calendar, what day is it today, and then making it in a calendar. Make Timetable for him uh, uh, for your uh, two year old child can make one with just drawing. Say in the morning, I'm going to actually make breakfast with mama, and then in the afternoon, I'm going to do this. In the evening, I'm going to do this. And then after he has made it, he can go back to the book and say, In the morning, while I was making breakfast, today I learned all about you know spices, for example, since he already knows you've written fruits and vegetables, etc. It could be with certain spices or pulses or things like that, or you could even that okay yes i also learned how to cut the vegetables my mom was cutting because a two-year-old will not be given a knife so a um, or you can even have those safety ones which you have with blunt ones you know for the children you can give it to them and with clay they can actually learn to cut it so they find motor skills also develop in that particular way and uh, like i told you ma'am while you're baking while you're cooking please do that give him an album uh, where he actually knows the names of these people and let him you know, kind of write it and do those uh, things. Uh, I think uh, with that, I have come to an end uh, with all the questions. Uh, let me see if I've missed out anything.
Yes, uh, Sanji has asked, my daughter is three years old and we were about to join school, but due to Corona, we haven't enrolled her. I presume she should start with LPG. We don't know if online classes would help or suffice. Please instruct or advise. Uh, uh, Sanji, uh, my, my suggestion is it is not only the online sessions. If they are happening, let the child go through. If it is not happening, there is nothing lost. As I told you, it is all about experiential learning at this particular age. So whatever I have given you as ideas today, and especially the theory of loose paths and involving academics in your day-to-day -day routine while you are in the kitchen, while you are in the bed, while you are in the living room, while you are taking a walk with your child in the garden, at all points, incorporate all these activities so that the child doesn't feel that he is actually learning. They will feel that they are actually having fun. Uh, Ranjana says, I have to be louder. I hope this is uh, loud enough. Uh, Sanjeev, I was suggesting uh, that you involve your child in a lot of free play activities. And during the course of the day, whatever you may be doing with the child involved. Okay, yes, some parents do say, ma'am, I'm doing work from home. How can I always be with the child? That's okay. That's the time you allow the child to do the free play. It is very, very important that the child is engaged. And then while the child has finished it, don't say, wait, I'm on a call. Just say, oh, can I just take five minutes and then come back to you? Do not curb the enthusiasm of the child because the child has actually built a big fort and wants to show it to you and is coming to you with a great amount of enthusiasm. So I think what you need to do is give me five minutes and I will just come back to you. And try to see whether you can finish your work in the five minutes. Take a break for two minutes from your work from home and then come back. And then, uh, you know, you can uh, understand, appreciate the child, give some input and say, wow, this is amazing. I never knew soldiers could be, uh, you know, this, this, uh, the, so beautifully done in such a fort. This is amazing. They come back to your work. I think it is very important to engage whether the school has got the online sessions or whether the school does not have. I think we have taken it upon ourselves and accepted that remote learning is the new normal. And if it is remote learning and the child is going to be at home, we as parents have to provide that kind of an environment. We as parents have to provide a stimulating environment where the children are able to come up with lots of these skills which are developed. And what are the skills that we today we saw? We saw that critical thinking skills are developed, problem solving is developed, creativity is developed and enhanced. Imagination is developed. A lot of language is developed. Active learning happens. Hands-on learning happens. You have divergent thinking. So all these come together, put together, will help your child develop and grow according to the phase that they are in. Do not waste a single minute, parents. It doesn't mean that you have to be regimental in terms of making a timetable cut to cut. But utilize every moment with your child where the child is actually going to have a lot of exploration, is going to experiment, is going to find out things for himself, herself, because as I told you, their schemas are developed on a lot of new knowledge that comes in where they are actually experimenting it and they are assimilating it and accommodating it and then they are able to adopt it and then a new schema develops. So parents, with this, I'm going to come to the end of the session, but as I told you, there are lots of games and activities, a lot of concepts, how you need to teach the children, which is there in the YouTube channel. Uh, I would recommend that uh, those parents who are interested, please go to the YouTube and click on Bhuvaneshwari Raman, and you will find a lot of these YouTube links as separate modules, which will just be about for three minutes, four minutes, etc., where you can do a lot of activities. And every week we keep adding it. So you could actually uh, enroll yourself as a subscriber because you get a notification when there is a new uh, episode added. And if there are any more questions that you would like me to answer, please do write. And if I have not answered them, we will definitely come back to you later. Uh, First Cry will help me reach out to you and we shall address uh, all your queries. Uh, thank you so much, parents. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, time. Uh, I think uh, I enjoyed being with all of you and I love the kind of questions that all of you had because this shows that you're involved. You want to help your child and you don't know that this is something which is new, which has come in. So what best can be done for the child? And I am more than happy to help you out, parents. 
thank you so much for Scry and it was an amazing morning uh, spent with all of you. Hope you all enjoyed and benefited.